All right, Shalom Rastafari, and we're still in the 41st Rastafari Sabbatical Studies, otherwise known as Finhas or Pin Pinhas. You might read as Pinches, and this is the 41st uh, Torah portion. And let's bring up the Sabbath house reading. And here we're at right here. Let's go right here. This is the 41st. Um, 41st, that's next week coming up, 42. And here's where we're at right here. Um, called Finhas. Finhas, the 41st portion, right? And that's from Numbers 25 and 10 to Numbers 30 and 1. Now, we're going to deal with the Torah portion. We're going to deal with the Torah portion right here. Um, let's bring this up, okay? There's the Torah portion right here. And um, not the prophetical portion, even though in a deeper level of study, once you get the foundation, then the big picture, as we say, the big picture will become very, very clear. Now, we had left off where um, Phineas, or Phinehas, where he had stayed the plague. It was a plague. Now, we say that this plague, what, what has been brought to us by Revelation, is that this plague was an ancient form of AIDS, an ancient form of uh, so-called immune, um, autoimmune deficiency syndrome. Now, that word immune is very, very important, because if you study that word immune and immunity, and you go to the biblical, Right, the scriptural immune and immunity, it relates to it relates to um, salvation. Salvation, in other words, one's immunity system, one's bodily immunity system, you know, that helps prevent um, disease and degeneration, is called your immune your immune system. Now. With AIDS, what they tell us of AIDS is that, well, AIDS is when your immune system um, shuts down or, in the sense, fails to operate. It fails to operate properly. You understand? It fails to prevent um, disease. So, therefore, certain um, germs which are in creation, and many of these germs are not really harmful, really, to one unless something is wrong with their salvation something is wrong with their um, so-called um, immune system. So the link between the immune system, right, the link between the immune system, I think we had looked it up here in one of these windows here. Maybe I have to close up some of these windows. Um, we had looked up AIDS, and um, if you study AIDS from a sacred geometric Perspective. I don't think we have these documents. They were on some of the sacred um, geometry pages by Dan Winter. I think we had looked up, what was it, HIV? Yeah, we had looked up HIV. And if you study the structure of the cell, you know, like everything is geometry. Beauty and symmetry is, is geometry, too. And when that geometry, you understand all that harmony, as one can say, that geometry is broken. You understand, for example, a beautiful person, you know, if they got into accident and their features are, in a sense, what one would say is disfigured or malformed or ill-formed, their, their beauty, in that sense, is marred because what really has happened is there's a certain symmetry that to the eye makes beauty. But then when you study it at the microbiological -bi level, you see that um, we're going to have to bring up that page, get that page, get those notes. Um, I think it was Dan Winter. Maybe he studied Dan Winter, search Dan Winter HIV AIDS, and they actually show the structure of the cell. The structure of the cell. Well, we have some some clips right here. Um, the structure of the cell. If you look at the structure of the cell, you see that the structure of the cell is radically changed to a, a different shape. You understand a different shape. So when you look at a healthy cell. And then when you look at an unhealthy cell, for example, this is a chart right here concerning, um, concerning uh, age right here, what they call human um, immunodeficiency virus, the human 
um, immunodeficiency virus. Something happens within the structure of the cell. But now they tell us, based on all the DNA studies, that the DNA is, is affected by our thoughts, right? Therefore, it's affected by our spirituality, right? Therefore, it's affected by our lack of spirituality. Now, when we heard T.D. Jake say that, well, um, Paul, New Testament Paul, didn't leave any instructions for how to... Sp I, I, I thought this was really wickedly facetious of him to say that. And, and the exact clip and where we saw it, hopefully we can get that out there and hopefully you can check it out for yourself. He actually says it with a so-called straight face, a so-called straight face, that um, there's nothing in the Bible that speaks to AIDS. You understand? But yet we have plague after plague, strange plagues. And if you look at the symptoms recorded in the Bible, you understand? You basically see that these symptoms match symptoms of modern diseases. But see, ones are working from a so-called Eurocentric paradigm. And in working from a Eurocentric paradigm, if the white man doesn't say that it is, right now if they have a report and say, hey, you know, actually we found that AIDS really could be a throwback to old disease, and even some Jewish Israeli researchers say that, you know, it has something to do with some of the plagues that affected, you know, Old Testament people, even Israelites, then you'll say, hey, Ross, you're right about that. You know, well, we're just giving some of the basic elements and those who want to study up on it before we write a fuller report or present a fuller report can do so. But we basically have sense from the scripture and from the context that what we have what we know today as AIDS is not really new. That AIDS is, is not really new. And it's it's known that AIDS is usually um transmitted by exchange of bodily fluids, either by sex or by so-called intravenous drug use. Now, what's interesting about the heresy at Baal Peor, when you look at the, the heresy at Baal Peor, okay, there's some other pages here, but we don't have time to get into this. If you look at the heresy at um, Baal Peor, what was this heresy all about? Well, the scriptures tell us something very interesting. Let's bring this up again from the very beginning of chapter 25. This Torah portion begins from verse 10. If we begin with the beginning of this particular part of the story because it begins with Phineas when Phineas actually stands up, right? And it says right here in verse uh, 7, you understand, 7, 8, and 9, that when Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, when he saw it, what, what it says in the verse before, that there was one of the children of Israel came and brought to his brethren, a Medeanitish woman in the sight of Moses. It's interesting because, in a sense, this was pimping. You've got to understand this was pimping, right? This was, I guess you call it Israelite, Old Testament, Moabite pimping going on. So he brought a Medeanitish woman. So now this is not a racial thing. A lot of people say this is a racial thing. It's not even so much a tribal thing. It's a, it's a moral thing because we know that there are faithful Israelites and unfaithful ones, right? Of the Medeanites, we know that Moses' own wife was a Medeanite, and elsewhere she's called an Ethiopian. But what we know from this portion is that something different was going on, and what was different right here is that Israel abode in Shittim, and the people, the Beta Israel, began in this place to commit whoredom. Right? They began to commit whoredom. We just wanted to bring up a modern image of Baal Peor, so you understand a modern image of Baal Peor. You know, people say, um, when people say, you know, um, trying to trying to be white, you understand? I mean, that goes so much deeper than, than most people even perceive. But it's really what's behind that. So we have right here an example of the black woman who keep the horseship, the horseship of white or Euro standards alive and growing. Now, How to Make a Slave already tells us, already makes this connection. Because how to make a slave so that the, that the black woman is most vital to their economy. This is why we have a lot of these shows on TV, you understand, where these um, foreign English and other white men, you understand, they become the champion in the black male and the black female lost sheep uh, syndrome. 
You understand? So it's once again the same, you know, image keeping the horseship of these Euro false god standards alive and growing from everything from fashion to religion. All right? Some say that black women have failed to lead the race. Now, this, this is true, but we have to also remember when we trace it to the very beginning, we find that Adam, the black man, bears an awful and crushing responsibility. This is why the hope and the promise and the revelation of Rastafari, the black Messiah, is so crucial, you understand, in um, regenerating, restoring, and renewing you understand, God's true paradigm. You understand, but it's all through willingness. You understand, if ones are not, don't make their wills obedience. They believe in, like, like do what thou wilt shall be all of the law. Whatever you want to do, you can make up your own laws. You understand, live in a time like where there's no king and everybody do what's right in their own sight. You basically are led to bow pure worship. And this is what this Torah portion um, illuminates and highlights on right here because it says in verse 2 and they call the people to the sacrifices of their gods it's interesting because ancient peoples at least they to Israel and even many other African peoples rarely ate pork yet you recognize that pork the swine, the khanzir the asama is a very big staple of so called you know negro, black and colored you know what I'm saying? Food. I get, there'll be some pork chops, you hear people say. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, eating that pig, you know what I mean? Pork rinds and, and all this filthy meat. You know what I'm saying? All this filthy flesh that in and of itself is unhealthy. And that adversely also affects the immune, the immune system. So you have to remember that man is a tripartite being. In other words, man is a trinity. Man has spirit, soul, and body. All right? And it's no doubt that Balaam or Balaam, understood this more or less. You know what I'm saying? That Balaam understood that he was called to curse the people, but because of Jah, he could not curse the people. So instead of cursing the people, he blessed them. But the one who hired him, Balak, still in a sense didn't get his money and sacrifices worth. So then we find that, that Balaam, what he did was counsel, counsel the enemy of the Israelites. We could say like in this modern revelation, white supremacy, counseled him, to basically um, to demoralize the people. You understand? That even though the Beta Israel had their problems, you understand, they still were at a level where they could not be cursed. But if you could demoralize them, you understand, and what better way, especially the men, you have to remember that the men were the target here. So it's not Israelite or Israelitish woman, so to speak, who are doing this. It's like, just check out some of these pics right here. You understand, to understand the, the daughters of Moab. You understand, and why we use even that, that phraseology to explain an ancient type. All right, we have, you all know what this is about, right? You know, and this is, everybody's doing it. You understand, everybody's doing it from the youngest to the oldest. This next picture where, where one of the brethren on the Facebook, he had linked us where the girl is looking at, um, I think, what's her name, um, Little Kim or something, thinking, like, what she want to be. She want to be a uh, uh, Michelle Obama or whether she wants to be a uh, uh, a Little Kim, a Little Kim type. And then we heard something disturbing that actually um, Little Kim, um, that uh, not Little Kim, but uh, Michelle Obama, she actually would like to be like Beyonce if she could be somebody else. If somebody had asked her that, so forth and so on. And one brother... Um, so to my Yoro on his uh, YouTube site, he kind of went into an interesting, you know, an interesting commentary on that fact, you know, and said that how Michelle Obama lost a lot of points with him because of that statement. But you have to understand well, there's something deeper to this. You have to remember that Eve was deceived. You understand? Eve was deceived. You understand? And the white, the, the, the black woman, in, in Willie Lynchism was broken. That's what Willie Lynch document basically tells you. You know, saying that the black woman was, was a, a key part of this equation. We could say that the woman was a key part of this equation. In other words, it's like nature. It's like turning nature upside down on its head. So what you're looking at right here is Baal, is Baal, Baal, you know, in, in certain ancient types and symbologies. 
You understand? Know now, Bill or Bob means an owner. You understand? Know an owner. If you notice that black people since the civil rights have fallen, when they, when they went down to Egypt and got all hooked up in this American so-called deeper, instead of coming out of Egypt, they got deeper in Egypt. Instead of being like Moses, who who refused to be called the the, the, the son of Pharaoh's daughter and instead chose to suffer, these ones instead of suffering with that global resurrection during the time of his majesty of black people, the lost sheep over here, the careless Ethiopians in the Americas, and so they turn their backs to Africa. You know what I'm saying? They turn their backs on Africa, and it's, it's, it's kind of interesting when we kind of look at the fact that they were to be lynched, and the whole lynching thing in and, and this particular Torah portion, that to hang them, they were, that they were to be hanged. And some other interesting pictures, since she's in the news, we said we're going to show this right here, a couple of um, um, clips when we saw Janet Jackson in some of her stills and outfits. Check this out. This is all part of that image. This is this is what the this is this is what the daughters of Moab were like. You know what I'm saying? We gotta recognize this is what some what the daughters of Moab were like. So you might think you're just going to a, a concert or a club, but actually it's a ritual. There's much, much more to that. So as the lost sheep, the Beit Israel become more demoralized you understand? That means that their tripartite, their spirit, soul, and body, the spirit and the soul part, becomes more infected with this thought, with this, with this adverse conscience, this fleshy, this carnal mind. Their bodies become more vulnerable, you know what I'm saying, to these natural viruses that are moving about, that if their immune system was strong, they would not be able to contract this. You understand? So this is where a lot of these drugs that help to um, um, regulate or contain or to, you know, to help to cope with the disease. You understand? They, no, they don't talk about healing. No, they, 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 they don't have no healing. They, there's no healing in Babylon. There's no healing because it's not meant to be an healing. It's actually meant to be another cage, if you think about it. And so when some folks talk about that AIDS is real, but it's not real, there, there's a lot to that. It is real, but it's not real. You understand? It, it does exist, but it doesn't exist. You know, that's why they don't want to tell you that there are some people who are carriers of this, and they never get sick, and they never get infected, they never succumb to the same things, but they have this virus in them. You know what I'm saying? They have this virus in them. You know what I'm So um, this is another couple of other pictures of Janet Jackson sends the whole Jackson clan to check out a couple more pictures, you know, of Janet Jackson right here. You know, now, you might say this is just a show. No, there's a lot to this. There's a whole lot, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, look at these dudes right here. There's a whole lot to this. This is, this is, this is what the Israelite men were doing. You understand? In that sin of Baal Peor. They were slaves. They had joined themselves. They had gotten yoked. Check out this one of, of, um, Janet Jackson, all right, and, and, and keep your eye on that, you know, keep one eye on that, or, you know, check that out, what's going on with the whole family situation, more sacrifices to come. Now, I, 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 I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, but I apologize, and brothers and sisters, that I don't have the picture of, um, what's her name, the, one of these uh, false goddesses, I don't even like to say the name, but in the grace of His Majesty in Christ, you know, for for educational purposes, we may. There's one of these Canaanite goddesses who actually um, does the same pose. And you'll see it if you look at some of the same poses where the they've even found in Israel uh, that a lot of the Israelite or the people of that land previously were under some, you know, they had these kind of idols in their house holding the same position, you see, holding the breast in the same type of position. You probably already have seen certain pictures, and we can probably make a split screen or others that, you know, um, help in this educational ministry. You already know the picture I'm talking about. If you look up some of these goddesses, they're holding their titties. You know, they're holding their titties in the very same way. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, I mean, the whole picture is, like, interesting, but it's seductive. It's meant to be seductive. And let me just give you another example. This is, this is one of your celebs, your, your celeb right, um, they're celibate, you understand, because they're devoted, you know, they're devoted to the gods that they worship, this is, um, 
who's, who, who's this guy? Well, I don't know. You know who this guy is, right? You know who this guy is. Um, I don't know who this, this, this joker is right here. You see, he got the Nefertiti, and it's very important that he has a Nefertiti chain on. You know, a lot of you think that Nefertiti, in that sense, was one of our own. You know what I'm saying? Because blacks have been so desperate that we've kind of accepted a lot of people who are not really our people. You understand? I mean, you see the Nefertiti chain right here. And it's very significant. You understand? The Nefertiti right here. Because those who know there's a powerful link with this Nefertiti, right? The Nefertiti and Jezebel. And Elzebel and Jezebel. So we have the Balaam. We have the Baals. The false, the, the false uh, priests. You understand? Both within the church. Both within the shit hop or the, the, the shittim. You understand? And then one more one more particular image right here. You understand? Know and this is the last, I think, last of these images. Just to give you a, a good visual of why this was so seductive on one hand. You understand? Know and see, this is all the same thing coming back again. This is why I say, oh, you a diva. Oh, you a goddess. Oh, you a diva. Oh, you're a goddess. And then people say, oh, I go to church. I believe in God. They believe in themselves. You understand? And then you believe in them, and you give them your psychic power. You understand? And when you give that psychic power, and then you're hurt by these things that happen to you, it also helps to weaken your immunity. You understand? Ask your scientists, ask your doctors, um, what makes immunity? You understand? What, what actually is it what you eat? You understand? If, if they were honest, or if they even knew, it's a combination of all that. It's a combination of your spirituality. You understand? It's a combination of your psychology. It's a, it's a combination of, of what you eat. You understand? And all those things working together. Now, when you now add the sexual magic to it, and, and there's another, another, uh, it's a wiki over here. Where is this? The Heresy of Val Pior. Just to, just to show you a little bit of how disgusting some of these rites and so-called rituals were, but then Really, if you know, some of these same things are going on today. So they say right here that um, PR, all right, PR means opening. You'll see it right here. It means opening. They don't tell you what kind of opening, right, just yet. You understand? But there's a couple of openings, you know, like when they talk about, um, you know, all holes plugged. You understand? There's, there's three openings. And I, I know people say, oh, this is being a little bit too... You know, it's, but, but that's what was going on. If you want to know why this was so disgusting, right here, this is a, this is a document right here that is called um, the Heresy of Peor. You can look it up on the wiki. Now, according to some Talmudic traditions, this Peor is connected to the Hebrew um, Peorah, or Fegare. It means open. It's used both of the mouth and the bowels. Both of you see that the mouth and the bowels. Go look it up on Wiki. It might mean opening, and so Baal Peor. This is under the heresy of Peor. Could mean Lord of the opening, or the owner of the opening. You understand? Which is the pimp. The pimp is the owner of the opening. You know? You know what I'm saying? Um, this apparent meaning is probably the source of Talmudic tradition associating Baal Peor with exposure. Exposure, you know, or, or loose, you know, loose um, morality, you know, being exposed, similar to that Nikki and Minaj and, and Little Kim, how they're both in that so called God, the squatting goddess Pasha, exposing, in a sense, their genitals, you know, and it says excrement, excrement, and we call excrement today shit. So it's interesting that shit and shit them. You understand? And shittim meaning thorny, right? Now, um, it goes on and said, to say that the tractate Sanhedrin 64a it attributes to Rob through Rabbi Judah the story of a sick Gentile woman who vowed to worship every idol in the world if she recovered. If she recovered from what? <laughs> you know, oh, she was sick. What was she sick? She had a cold? She had a headache? You understand? Or, or, or did she have a, an immune salvation deficiency disease, right? It says upon recovery, so somehow she recovered, right? She set out to fulfill her vow, but she drew back at Peor. But she drew back when she got to Peor, like when she started to go out to the clubs 
and stuff. First she said if, you know, she'd be healed, she prayed that, prayed to the Lord, but then a friend invited her to go out to the club. It was banging out there. You understand? So she drew back at Peor as the rights, as the rights disgusted her, right? What rights disgusted her? It says eating beets, um, uh, drinking strong drink, and then uncovering oneself. So it's eating beets, right? Beets, and that, we haven't gotten into what's in beets, right? Drinking strong drink, and then, and then, right? And then uncovering oneself or exposing oneself or, or, or riding the pole, the stripper's pole, the Asherah, you know, the Asherah, the Asherah. In fact, that position that you saw um, um, Janet in, Janet Jackson, that's also Asherah does that, Ishtar also, you know. Um, so a story follows about a Jew who showed his contempt for God by wiping his behind on its nose after defecating in the temple and who was praised for his piety by the acolytes of the God who said, no man has ever before served this, I this idol thus. <laughs> so now some are apostate Jew here, like the Israelites are talking about, like the lost sheep, the Negroes, blacks, and colored, who showed contempt for the God, right, the God by wiping his behind on its nose after defecating in the temple. And he was praised for his religiosity, according to this false cult, by the acolytes of the God who said no man has ever before served this idol like this. Then we have another part here in Tractor uh, Avoda, Zara 3, which states in the Gemara that the area before the idol Peor was used as a latrine. It was used as a latrine. So this area was used as a place of, you know, of pissing and shitting, in other words. And that the worship of the idol consisted of excrementing before it, squatting and shitting before it. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know a lot of shit goes on in the clubs. You know what I'm saying? A lot of shit goes on, metaphorically and, and, and actually. Now, uh, Arashi, Arashi, he comments on Numbers 25 and 3, this is the area that we're in, that Peor or Fegor was so called, he was called that because they would uncover before it the end of the rectum. This is why you see those pictures where they have, like, the person, um, the old European kind of etchings where, like, there's that pheasant, that peasant, pheasant, European woman, American or something like that, or English or something, and she's kissing, like, Satan's ass. She's kissing Satan's butt. You understand? So right here, it says that Peor was called that because they would uncover before at the end of the rectum and bring forth excrement, bring forth shit. And this is its worship. Could this be one of the reasons why this word is so popular to express so many deep, deep, deeply held um, sentiments? You understand? So this page right here, um, when I went to this page and I saw this, actually after we already had, you know, recognized that clearly, this is what it's clearly kind of showing us, right? Because Balaam is described as son of Beor. Beor is never himself identified. And there's a close phonetic similarity between Beor and, and Peor. And that's noticeable. If Beor and Peor are one and the same, then the son of Beor merely identifies um, um, Bileam as being a prophet of Baal Peor. Alternatively, uh, Balaam or Bileam means and is a corruption of Baalim. Remember, we dealt with American Balaam or Baalim. Right, so you can see how one is B A L A A M and one is B A A L I M. Now the plural, that's uh, Balim, is the plural of Baal, which means the Baals, the husbands, the pimps. You know, you remember those um, movies from the black exploitation days and everything? They're like the Baals, they got the pimp stick, and you know, and you know, all the symbology is there. All the Baals, the cognate with all the gods, they are like the gods. They're the owners, the husbands, the one who own shit. You understand? They own people. You understand? They own cars. Like, oh, look what you got. Look what the, you know what I mean? I'll, so this is where people get this ownership. You understand? That's why people will do anything to own these things so they can show off these things because it's like an achievement. In fact, in the break I was um, meditating that actually... Um, um, hip hop is um, 
the civil rights movement firstborn ch- son. That, that 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 hip hop is the civil rights movement firstborn. That's the first. That's the cane right there. The firstborn son of the hip hop movement. You understand? Know um, even though many of them be hypocrites and say, "Oh, these people don't understand what we fought for," so forth and so on. Yes, they do. The the hip hoppers and those who they think that they're actually fulfilling the desires of the civil rights forefathers. This is what's interesting. So Balaam is described as building altars at several of the high places of Moab, including at Peor, without ever criticizing any Moabite religion occurring at those locations. Entirely plausible as Balaam was a prophet of a Moabite god. Indeed, Balaam's own name is generally considered in critical scholarship to be a compound of Baal, Baal, and Am, which is a Semitic god. Later in the Bible, within the account of the war, there's a war against the Midianites, Right, these degenerate Medeanites or these careless Ethiopians, Balaam is described as being almost or being amongst those killed for committing the heresy of Peor, implying that Balaam was one of those who had joined themselves to bow Peor. To bow Peor. So if you if you get into this page, the heresy of Peor, it kind of gives you a lot of other important in some areas, you know, not not so pleasant details, but with the prophetic eye, with the with 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 the veil being taken away and removed in the Black Messiah and the Moshia in Christ and kingly character, you'll be able to see how what happened before that really there's nothing really new under the sun, so to speak. You know, it may seem like age, and some of these things are new. Because you trust, you have faith in the European and in the CDC and so forth and so on. So if they don't say, if they then say they make a link, then that'll be the news talk. Everybody be talking about it and say, "Wow, ain't that something? Who would have known it was in the Bible?" So we have the story right proceeding from that of the prophet Bilam, in which he ascends the Mount of Peor. He makes sacrifices to God from a top. From a top it now here's what's so interesting about Balaam. He is obviously a sorcerer. A brother in Acts, why do we know he's a sorcerer? Why would you call a prophet to curse? It's not to protect them or not to help them or give them guidance, but to curse. But it shows really that that even in the cult world they know the true power of our Father and the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They know that. That's why they say, well, don't, don't talk about it. Let's, let's leave God out the classroom, leave the Bible, just put it on the side, and they mark it, you know, and they whitewash it so it has no real effect. But having finished his sacrifices, Balaam, he views the Israelites on the plain below, and although hired to curse them, he pronounces a blessing over them, prophesying their blessed nature. And the destruction of Moab. Here's what's interesting. That, that Balaam, he prophesied that the Beit Israel, the once lost but now found black sheep, that we had and have a blessed nature. And that ultimately it will lead to the destruction of Moab. Right? When the narrative of focus returns to the point of the Israelites, the contrast between Balaam's voiced opinion of them and their actual behavior is distinctly noticeable. According to Torah, the Beta Israel or Israelites, after spending a short time in the plain of Moab, they began to involve themselves with the Moabite, Moabitish woman. Consequently, under the influence of this foreign, this syringe culture, even though it's related to the Israelites, even though we can say it's black, even though someone can say it's African. You understand? But it is immoral. It is against the way, the truth, and the life of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So under that influence of that foreign culture, so we say it's not that racial thing, it's the moral thing, under that foreign culture, that Moabite um, apostate culture, the Israelites began whoring, whoring after the Moabite gods. What do you think it is? You know, ones will say, now just go to a strip club and watch some strip and stuff like that. I'm no whore. Really, you are whoring. You're whoring after the Moabite gods. And you're joining yourself by those acts to Baal Peor. To Baal Peor. And in the Septuagint, much like the Amharic at this particular point, we have um, um, Baal Fegor, you understand, or Baal Fegor, 
which is a Baal, right, a husband or a pimp, right, a pimp that was associated um, with Mount Peor. He was a particular pimp of that mount. That was his, like his penthouse, you know, the mountain top places were like, you know, the clubs and the cracks of the rocks and the caves. You can imagine the resonance there. They, they could really have some clubs up in there. You understand? Now, Yahweh, Jah, he orders Moshe, Musa, Moses, the head of the fraternal order of the Lewawi and the Levites, to gather the chiefs, all the chiefs, all the heads, all the alekoch, to gather the chiefs of the people and to hang up the idolaters before Yahweh. To do what? To turn away Yahweh's anger. This is why I think it's so very interesting that um, Tupac, right? Tupac on that particular album, you understand that he has himself hanging, you know, uh, you know, like crucified. People say, oh, he's trying to be Jesus, so forth and so on. I mean, could there be not a more accurate um, biblical interpretation to that besides he's trying to so-called be um, Jesus? I mean, notice the connection right here. We were still looking for that pick, but you know the pick I'm talking about. We might just do a whole vid on that particular subject matter right there because Mo Yahweh had told Moses to do one thing, and we pointed that out, that what Moses really did was tell them to kill them. You know, saying go out and kill them. We don't find, like in other areas where Yahweh orders something, and then they say that how they did it exactly according to what Jah had ordered. Here, again, we don't find that connection. You understand? So Yahweh said to hang them up. You understand? To turn away. In order to turn away, you know, it's lynch those niggas. In, in a sense, you know, in the modern day parlance, considering who we are in this time of revelation, to lynch them. And that would turn away the anger for what they had did, the trespass, because they whored after the Moabitish woman. They whored after this, this, this immoral foreign culture and foreign gods and strange gods. So now it's at this point that the scene, right, the scene in the scripture abruptly, it abruptly changes or shifts from concerns about the Moabites to the account to those about the Medeanites, which is interesting. Now there's a man who's an Israelite. His name is Zimri or, or Zimri, and he's the son of Salu. He brings a Medeanite woman named Cosby or Cosby. Interesting. The Cosby show. He brings a Moabite woman, Cosby, Cosby, you see C O Z B I, Cosby, Cosby, right? Into the camp in the sight of Moses where the people are weeping. The people are weeping. So while the people are weeping for what has happened and what must happen to those who have gone astray, they had to be dead on. They, they, they got the death penalty. You understand? So the people are very sad. This is their relatives. This is their folks. This is their sons and brothers and probably fathers uh, as well that, 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 you know, got caught up in the clubs. And, you know, and this is, remember, this is before grace, you know. So you know that they were basically to be deaded on, right, as ones would say. That Phineas now, the grandson of Aaron, he, thereupon he rises up with a spear, and he follows the man into the chamber and thrusts the, the spear through both the man and woman who were evidently in the act of copulation, or they were in the act of abbreviated fornicating under the crown of the king or the crown of the kingdom, or under the Torah. You know, the, the Torah has a crown on it. You know, the Torah has a crown on it. So they were fornicating. Right or copulating. Now the the plague from which about twenty four thousand had died then ceased to take place. So if we look at the steps of this, you understand they had haters, they had enemies. You understand who used or was attempting to use witchcraft and sorcery. This is like when we look at what's going on with hip hop. You understand you know all this kind of sorcery that has crept into hip hop, and we look at the original forms of hip hop. It was actually being used as a resurrection, in a sense, of people, of, of their consciousness, using the music as an upliftment, uh, uh, as a resurrection. You understand? A form of, of rising up the people's consciousness. But what happened? There were the Moabites. You understand? There were the Moabites amongst them. And they used the woman or they used the sexual, we could say the power of sex. 
right? They used that um, particular power of sex, whether it was in a, a form like um, this right here, or Egypt has an interesting form right here, you understand? And it probably was similar, similar to this, you understand? Form of sex is all the same kind of a thing. You understand a form of sex, you overs to um, demoralize, you know, to demoralize these these Israelite men. You see, the Israelite men, what the Israelite men didn't know, right, was that Barak, who was king of the of the Moabites, he was afraid because the Israelites were getting too strong. They were having too many victories against enemy, you know, you know, against enemy tribes tribes that he probably feared, him and his people. So now when he saw the Israelites having all these victories, like when he saw black people rising in the 60s, they had to do something to bring them down, something to demoralize them, right? And when King talked about the check bouncing, like he really expected to get a check for, what, 400 years? You understand? They recognized, well, we got our right replacement king to take attention off of the king of kings. So now we see this demoralization coming. Now what does Phineas do? You understand? Phineas, just like this buffalo warrior right here, he rises up. You understand? See these two skulls right here? You understand? One for the Israelite, you understand, who had the demon in him, and for that 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 biatch that in spite of everything, see it was the defardness, it was the boldness, it was the so called chutzpah, it was the audacity. You know what I'm saying? When you really check out this particular scene here, it was the audacity that while they was weeping, one Israelite brings a woman for the next one. I mean, what do you think that's about? When I first read it, I'm like, what kind of thing is this? And then it was like the, you know, the Holy Spirit just said, just, just recognize. And so when I looked at it, I said, oh, wow. And it was, if it was being done today, if you were to witness it in real time, you know what I'm saying? One guy, one Israelite bringing a uh, uh, foreign woman around this very time that the rest of the Israelites are weeping, you know, and over the fact that so many of the people are dying. Because remember, the plague was going on. The plague was amongst Israel. And it's interesting how many different times we see th th these different plagues. And many of these plagues are usually associated, you understand, um, with um, sexual and moral sexual practices. Mm hmm. And not just sex, you know what I'm saying? But immoral sexual practices, but behind this immorality, it's almost like how Solomon was tricked, you know what I'm saying, by Pharaoh's daughter after the time of the Queen of Sheba. And he got caught up into sorcery at the same time. He, he felt confident that these things would have no effect, but it was his desire, you know what I'm saying, for those heathenish women who were not seeking like Ruth was, the God of Israel. Now, one will say, well, if the Moabites and the Ammonites are not to enter into the congregation of the Lord, well, how come, you know, Ruth did? But if you notice, there was Oprah or Orpah, Orpah, Oprah, you know saying, who was the other woman, and she went back to her people. She went back to her heathenish ways. When Naomi was trying to send Ruth away, you know saying, Ruth said, basically, um, your God is my God. Where you go, I go. She was ready to forsake that her heathenish ways, you understand? And besides, the commandment which says that no Ammonite or Moabite shall enter, it is speaking clearly in the language, if you could read the language, to the males. You understand? To the males. In other words, it's very rare that you see where it is a prohibition for an Israelite man to take a woman, even if she's a foreign woman, if she truly, and this is community standards, not just in his eyes, it has to be in community standards because it is a light or a community, not like we're scattered now and people can do whatever they please in their own sight, but in community, you understand? Know in other words, one's had to try one's spirit to really see that they're of Jah. You understand? And so, therefore, what's interesting about this is focusing not so much just on that they're Moabites, but these are Moabites who are joined to false gods. Right? And these and these Moabite women are using their their sex appeal, you understand, know to seduce God's people and to take them off of their prophetic track. And this is where black folks, you understand, know the black people are at this time. 
So now, notice what happens to stop this plague. We still got this plague of AIDS going on. Mm -hmm. It don't seem like nothing has stopped. And if you look at that frontline program, AIDS in America, you know what I'm saying? AIDS in America program, it seems as though um, it's getting worse all the time, and nobody in the churches, nobody's talking about it. You know what I'm saying? It's, and it's hitting everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yet, the ways that it's contracted are known, and no one can say, honestly, for straight face, that the ways that it's contracted is not immoral, as well as one can say unhealthy. They say, oh, use a condom, so forth and so on. But we know a, a lot of these practices, whether it's a drug, so forth and so on, you know, was, so we can see that degeneration, degradation, and that's what opens you up, you know, saying, for the curse, you know, saying, because of the whole link with the immunity. Immunity equals salvation. Medin, Bamarinya Medin, and we have Madan, you know, what I'm saying, like immunity. If somebody's coming, I, I want to get immunity in this country. You know, saying, that immunity that they want to get is a form of political salvation. You know, was, the immunity in our immune system is also a form of biological salvation. And when that immune, it, 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 the, the immunity, the immune system gets adversely affected. In other words, when, when the, the atoms or the spiritual atoms begin to deform, the shape changes, when the rotation begins to go in the opposite direction, you know, when the thought and the spiritual imbalances, it opens up the system. That's why they say often when someone... Um, dies of AIDS, like a popular, famous person, they'll say, oh, they had this or that, because they found out that they don't have to necessarily say that their T-cells were low or whatever like that, because what happens with AIDS is that it will affect, you know what I'm saying, the weakest, most vulnerable part of that particular person. So if one person has, say, a bad, say, heart, for example, they could say the person has a heart attack. Another person has a bad lung. They could say a lung failure or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? They could say different things. They could even call it cancer and this and that. You understand? And only the doctors who look at the, the you know, look at the documents and, and are able to see, they'll recognize, oh, the person had AIDS, immune deficiency syndrome, and this basically led to this disease, and we'll call it not AIDS. They didn't die of AIDS, but they died of this particular, you understand, this particular um. Um, disease, you know what I'm saying? But overall, for, for the Beit Israel both then, you know what I'm saying, Negro, Blacks, and Coloreds now, it is a plague. But this plague was ended. But see, the way it was ended, <laughs> it, it, you know, the way that it was ended, it's interesting because what Phineas basically did, and we're going to get into this right here, um, some would say, oh, that was a cruel thing to do because they just wanted to shag up, you understand? But John already said, done the shagging, everybody doing the shagging and get juked, you understand? And this one right here in, in, in verse 6 is so bold, you understand? You know, um, to bring a Medianite woman to his brethren, you see that? And then one of the children of Israel came and brought to his brethren a Medianitish woman, right, not, not around the back door, around the back way, but in the sight of Moses and in the sight of the congregation of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the congregation of the tabernacle. You know, it's like some, some as they say, some Negroes don't hear. They don't get it. They think like this is a joke or something like that, that we, we already know what's wrong, and we're seeking to correct and repent of what's wrong, and these ones are still going about doing it. So Phineas, right, Sinhas, Phinehas, right, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the grandson of Aaron, he saw it and he rose up from among the congregation and he took a javelin in his hand. And so he went after the man of Israel into his tent and thrust both of them through. You understand? And that's the idea where it's taken that they were most likely in copulation. You understand? Because thrust thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. You know what I'm saying? So we can see it was probably, you know, we, we, we could figure out how it, was probably, it probably happened. But here's the key part. It says, so the plague was stayed. It was contained. Mm -hmm. 
Notice it doesn't say that it was healed. You know what I'm saying? It says the plague was stayed. The plague was stayed from the children of Israel. Then it speaks about um their mech uh Sheftim, Yamoto, Haya Arat, Shinabra, and those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord spake to Moses saying, Now here's here's a very interesting part right here. Exiabirim Musain and D below Tanagaro Ya Kahinu Yaron Lich Ya Al Azara Lich Finahas Bek in Ate Be Mekatkala Chowak and a Toalina Ukutayena Ka Israel Lijocha Melesa in name Ye Israelin Lijocha Be Kina Ate Alat Efa Alat Alat Ephahum. He says, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, hath, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel. While he was what? Zealous. Now, this word zealous can also be translated sometimes jealous. Right? But, see, in the higher sense, it is zeal. When rightly guided with right faith and right knowledge, it's zeal. In the lower sense, in ignorance, is jealousy. You understand? Is is jealousy? So let's understand that with this word. It's it's, it's understandable in the Afro-Shemitic sense if you understand the language in its proper context. But a lot gets lost in um, translation or mistranslation. So he was zealous for my sake among them. You understand that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Same word. Notice, notice how they translate it. Here, bekinate is zealous. Here, bekinate it's jealous. Right? So we see, we, we see jealous, zealous. So they play around with that in the King James. And then you get people like Oprah or Oprah who say that um, God is jealous of me. You understand? Because one, do you remember what, to be, a, to be a true Christian, you have to deny yourself. You understand? So who do you think God is just focusing on you? On what you got, like because you got a house, a car, and and you can give everybody in the audience a free car that 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 that, that job cannot do greater. Are you so stupid? You understand? But part of it could be the translations. Part of it, you know, we're not we're not adv adv advocating for for these people who should know better. You know, have book clubs and all that, so they should know something. They're intellectual. They're so-called bright people. Anyway, um, a lot of these people also. And uh, Baal of Figura, they probably thought themselves as bright people too. But it says, Silazi Neho, Yesalamain Kal Kidan, Isetawalo. Wherefore say, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace. This is very, very important. My covenant of shalom. My covenant of peace. And remember, peace is not just like absence of a war or absence of like gunshot or something like that. Peace is also tripartite, peace in one spirit, peace in one soul. That means psychologically. If one doesn't have peace in their soul, they have psychological problems. It can, it can be at the extreme of double-mindedness and called bipolarism. It can be depression. You understand? You know, it can, you know, it can be a, a whole, you know, schizophrenia. A lot of different things happen when you don't have peace, shalom, in your soul. You understand that no one that can give you shalom in your soul is our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, his word. You understand, and faith in him and faith in his word to the glory of his father, Abba Kedus. And he goes on to say in verse 13, Asura Shorts, it says, Laam lakum kena toalina, les ralima lejocha asa tesera yoalina, le arsu ka arsum bechala lezaru lezaru le zalalema kehnet al kidana yahon letal it says and he shall have it and he you know like Shiloh to him is the one that belongs you understand know, sille you understand know, he shall have it and his seed mm -hmm. and his seed and his race and his seed right after him even the covenant of an everlasting or an eternal priesthood because he was what zealous for 
his God. You see? See, this one that, that brought the Medeanite woman and the one that went while well, everybody's weeping, he went into his tent to have sex. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like somebody dies, you know, and somebody else can only think about getting shagged or shagging. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, it really shows you a lot about the morality because this, this is a moral, you know what I'm saying, the moral theocracy. This is a moral, you know what I'm saying, um, international morality, collective security. So he violated this, this um, Zimbri. You know what I'm saying? He violated the collective security. You know what I'm saying? The immunity, the salvation of the community. You know what I'm saying? And it was, it was Sinahas, you know what I'm saying? It was Sinahas who rose up and who, who acted. You know what I'm saying? He acted decisively. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and see, this, this act and acting righteously you understand, in such a way. Now, some would say, oh, but he killed somebody. Remember, they're on, we're talking about Israelite jurisdiction, not Negro, black, and color jurisdiction. Let's, let's recognize that. We're not talking about 13th, 14th Amendment. You know what I'm saying? So-called American citizen jurisdiction. You know what I'm saying? We're speaking about the wilderness, speaking about Israel. So don't, don't get it twisted. But what's interesting is that what the Holy Spirit showed is that because ones don't act zealously for the true God, not only do we get the plague, you know what I'm saying, but we also get the black-on-black -black crime. You know, we've heard a lot of people, there was someone on New Orleans on a news show, I think CBS, yes, I saw BS on CBS, and they was talking about it, like what's going on in New Orleans, you know what I'm saying, and, and the new mayor or whatnot, he, he's keeping, like, pictures and the whole file, like books, on every so-called black-on-black crime and killing it. And it seems like he might be sincere, um, the mayor of New Orleans, you know, at least more sincere than the black guy that was interviewing him. He's like, he didn't really care. You kind of pick that up. You know what I'm saying? If, if you're, you know, spiritually awake and aware. But black on black crime, not only just in, in Philadelphia, I mean, not Philadelphia, New Orleans, but probably Philadelphia too, but Chicago. You know what I'm saying? We've been seeing incidences up here in New York. You know what I'm saying? This black on black killing. And everybody's asking, well, what's wrong? Well, if we take this example right here. I mean, let's imagine even a European or white community. Even look at this shooter, this killer, this terrorist guy, this this James Holmes guy, right? You know, they, they they have a lot of sympathy for each other. Even one of the guys that was shot or whatever, he said, if I could see the guy, you know, I would want to pray with him, and I would say, I'll forgive you, so forth and so on. Well, and it sounds really nice, you know, and everything like that. But what is interesting is that, when the white people in their white areas, European people, they act decisively. Something like that is coming up. They will act. And we can look throughout American history and see them acting in New Orleans when black people um, before Reconstruction or during that, th those early days of the 1860s, they were coming to power. The white folks got guns. They just went up in there and took over the... But if the white folks didn't, they would probably be in the same situation niggas are in. They'd be white on white killing. They'd be pimping and whoring each other out, so forth and so on. But they acted decisively to stay this plague. Now, this, this, particular, um, this particular incident in the Bible, I think, is very, very important because it, it explains a lot about the black-on-black -black crime. In other words, when you don't do the right thing, then you just get more and more of the wrong thing. And this is the, the major example, you know, saying that we get. And if we go to verse 14, um, and we've got a couple more minutes in this, in this um, segment right here. It says, Ka midiyama we tum, God, yetegedelo, yesalawiwa so sema zenberi nebre, yabatu beit aleka, yesema or nawiyan yehone, yeah, Selu Lij Nebere. Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with a Medianitish woman, was Zimri, the son of Salu, the, the, a, a, a prince of a chief house among the Simeonites. So he was a chief. Now you know if the chief go bad in a way such as this, it inspires the whole. You know what I mean? If the head is sick, the whole body is sick. Principle. Verse 15, yet to get a little wim, um, midi yamawit, um, simwa, kesbi, nebre, erswam yesur lij nebrech, ersum, be midiam zen, ye abatu beta wagen, 
Alek Anebre, and the name of the Medianitish woman that was slain was Cosby or Cosby. It was Cosby, the daughter of Zor. He was head over a people and a chief house in Median. So you, you, you would have to see also on the political level what was being done by this immoral and illegal Congress. It wasn't just a matter, you know, saying just having sex. You see, a lot of folks think it's just about that. No. Oh, they were just in love. Yeah, all right. Um, you can believe a lie if you want. We want to know the truth. Now, verse 16 says, Exiariad Musain and D below Tanagro and Yahweh, and the Lord spake to Moses, saying, now, this is after now that plague is stayed, and we're about to get to the next part now. It says, Bethegor, Be Mekashefatu, Ken, Sile Tegedalechu, Sile Midiam, Alek Alij, Sile Echitacho, Sile Kesbi, Be Fegor Mikniat, Be Shenegalu Achu, Shingala Asal Chen Kewa Chuhalina. It says, vex the Medianites. And now the Medianites are the classic case of careless Ethiopians. You know, the Ethiopians over here are kind of involved in the shit hop too. You understand? So a lot of the girls you see in the videos and all that. So just think about that for a moment. Now it says, vex the Medianites and smite them. Mm-hmm. Not smack them, smite them. It says, verse 18, for they vex you. For they vex you with their wiles, with their tricks. In other words, they, they, this was not just, just having a good time. It was something deeper. They understood what they were doing. You know what I'm saying? They, they overstood what they were doing. Like a lot of these so-called, you're entertaining Negroes, blacks, and coloreds. A lot of them understand what they're doing. Michael Jackson, he understood what he was doing, and he felt some sort of repentance and remorse, so he tried to kind of peep what was going on in different ways and, and, and get it out there and, and resist on a certain level, right? But he was kind of brought in by his family, if you think about it. Now the family's up in the news going at each other's throats. So you can see what's, you know, you can see there's something rotten. You say just a family. No, there's something rotten. It says, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor. They beguiled you. They tricked them. Right? Um, and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of a prince. This was the daughter of a prince of Median, the sister, which was slain in the day of the plague for Peor's sake. For Peor's sake, because of Peor. You know and so you have to recognize what they were trying to do. They were trying to discombobulate the movement of Israel, take them off of the promised land, get them caught up with some other tribe, you know, get them sidelined, you understand, know a distraction, uh, a detour, and, and then to consolidate and 